I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Are you doing well? Amen. Welcome everybody to this first service, English service. We believe uh, people who are watching, even you, you are blessed in this service. May the Lord bless you and continue to inspire you, to teach you, to favor you, to exalt you, even to anoint you. Receive his anointing this morning. Praise the Lord. My topic today with you is not by human's power, but God's spirit. Not by human's power, but by God's spirit. Let us read in uh, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Let us read Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. If you have your Bible, let us read together. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible say, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. The human capacity had many limitations. Limitation because of many things that happened, occurred in our lives. For instance, limitation because of a health. If you have a poor health, you are sick, you cannot achieve many things. Because when you want to do something, the body tells you to sleep. Or you have a pain, you have time to groan. And when we are groaning, we don't have a time to think. Those who think are people, those who think are people who have a sound mind. If you don't have a sound mind, if you have a pain in your body, you cannot have innovation, you cannot create, you cannot think beyond your box. But when we have a good health, we can even think better. Try to innovate. Try to think. To create. So because of lack of good health, people are, limit, are limited to do things that are right. Also another example is the lack of wealth, financial, financial status. When your finance finance is not good, you cannot achieve many things. Even though you have many things. You have a vision. You have uh, opportunity. You have ideas. But because you lack money, you lack investment, you remain and sometimes you die with your ideas. If we go to the cemetery where many people are sleeping those people who died many of them had genius ideas they were genius but they couldn't express themselves because of lack of money so they died poor but in their head they had many many good ideas so because of lack of money they couldn't achieve a lot in their lives. So they died poor. Though they had a good, good ideas, concept, vision in their mind. So they were limited by lack of finance. And the thing that makes someone to become limited is lack of 
good friend of good or good connection. You see, everyone who has been or who arrived in some point of lives, he met someone who helped him to go there. Connection is very important in human's life. If you are connected in the wrong way, you will stay the same person. I, every time, consider many people who came from Africa, they have a problem of integration. They cannot integrate with the society, cope with the situation in the country, the nation. Instead, they live together, they speak the same language, even in a foreign land, they eat the, they are the same food that they eat. So they cannot go further because they stay in the same box. But if you want to go further, you should go out, come out of that box and integrate in the society, talk to other people different to yours, different to your race, to your color, people who had different ideas. Uh, other pers perspective of, of life then after talking with them sharing with them they will give you experience, ideas you don't have if you want to achieve a lot you need to shift from your uh, zone of comfort and go beyond challenge your mindset challenge your mind don't don't be uh, pleasant in your routine life, but try to come out of that routine and learn to live with other people who will challenge you, people who will sometimes uh, leave you alone and uh, find your, your way alone. But if you are not in that environment that we expose you to go beyond your imagination beyond your box beyond your comfort zone you will remain the same person every time god has used people to help other people to cross over to go to the other side so people are limited because they can't find the right people to help them to help them i learned that for the, the famous lady called the opera to arrive where she is today she was a waitress in a restaurant i heard that she was a waitress but one day she was serving she served at the table where the family of the former president kennedy were, were eating. After talking, chatting with them a little bit, they opened the door for her. She became who she is today. It's not only opera. Many other people also met few people who helped them to cross and to go into their destiny. If that day she could not meet that family, probably she would remain the same person. But the family of Kennedy become a ladder where he climbed and she re where she climbed and she reached her destiny. You remember Zacchaeus in the Bible. For Zacchaeus to receive Jesus in his house, he climbed the tree. On that sycamore tree, he could see Jesus. And when Jesus arrived, he told Zacchaeus to come from the tree and meet Jesus. That night, Jesus left to his home. The life of Zacchaeus changed. Today, when we read the Bible, someone called Zacchaeus is in the Holy Scripture. But imagine if you could not climb that tree where Zacchaeus would be today. 
We are limited because sometimes we don't have real friends, real people, or right people who can help us to climb and to step into our destiny. Other people also are limited because of their experience. If you don't have enough experience, you repeat the same mistake. By repeating the same mistake, you remain the same person. By remaining the same person and not learning a lesson from the, the, former, the former mistake, you remain the same until you die. But people who made errors, who made a mistake, they try to learn a lesson from that mistake, from that errors. After learning, they improve their ideas, they improve their lives. We are limited because our experience is short, is narrow, is small. How we can we then we can make our experience to become great, especially for young people. When you are still young, you think that you know everything, but truly you don't know. You think that you are able to do everything, but truly speaking, you can't. But there is ambition and motivation inside the young people that tell them that you can do this, you can do this. Those ambitious ideas, those eager to expectation to go further are good because those things motivate you to go further but you need someone you need a mentor someone who can mentor you then you reach your potential maximum potential but by remaining alone trusting your own mind trusting your own intelligence you are limited because of experience but if you hang out with a, an old person, it will be easy for you to help you because all the people, they know many things. They know things that you don't know. They can help you. They can order your step. They can show, they can show you the way where to go. They can help you to find what you are seeking because they have been on that way. They know how to help you to, to, to help you to come in right on right way. So, the problem is young people, they want every time to hang out with young people. People with the same, similar ideas, similar joke, similar experience, so they cannot go further. But if you want to go further, yes, when you hang out with your siblings, you, you are young people, but every time also to get connected with all the people because all the people they can show you where you cannot see they see further beyond you they know what you are looking they have been there they will show you the way the right way to arrive there so people are limited because they don't have a right connection so they you cannot, they cannot achieve what they want because they are limited in their connection. Sometimes we can connect with people, but we choose a poor connection. Wrong people. Wrong people always will lead you to the wrong path, to the wrong side. For instance, you are going to uh, Fort Worth, Fort Worth uh, downtown, but wrong people will lead you to Dallas downtown. You will spend time, you will come there very weary, very tired, because you have spent time in Dallas looking for Worth downtown. So, after many years, you will come back, you say, oh, I have spent my time in wrong direction. And remember, every time, every day of our life is beneficial. When you lose that day, we never, never bring it back. So every day we need to ask a God to man to make a right decision to know people whom we can connect together. If they are wrong people, they will bring you in the wrong direction. Today, I'm not speaking with you 
how this human capacity becomes a hindrance to our lives. But I want to add something that is very profound today. Connection with God. To have the power of God. If you have the power of God, God will help you to connect with the right people. God will bless you with finance. God will bless you with ideas. God will bless you with a good health. If you have a good health, you can do everything. But most important is to connect with the Holy Spirit. The month of June is dedicated on the Holy Spirit. I want to invite everyone to work with the Holy Spirit. If you work with the Spirit of God, He will teach you. He will help you. He will bless you. Amen. Zechariah went to see Zerubbabel. Who is Zerubbabel in the Bible? Zerubbabel, he was an exile guy. They went to another country from Judea, from Israel. He was from Judea, but from the lineage of the king. He was among the king's great, great children. So they went to live in the exile, another country called Persia. Persia today is Iran. They went to Iran not because they want to go there, but the king of Iran at that time, king of per Persia, he came, he took every people from Judah, he went with them to his country. So Zerubbabel was among those young people who grew up in Persia kingdom. Remember, in Israel, they had many uh, kings who dominated them. There were the kings of Babylon. Babylon where Nebuchadnezzar was the king. After King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Persia also came and they took the remained people in uh, Jerusalem, Judea. So, Zerubbabel was born in exile country. But time came when the prophet Jeremiah prophesied saying that after 70 years, 70 years, you will go back to your home. And you will go, you will build the church, the temple again. So he is lucky because he is in generation that we go back to their homeland. Zerubbabel also went to their country. But he didn't go as just a simple man. The king of Persia appointed him to become a governor of Judea. A governor of the country of Judea with the capital city, Jerusalem. So he was a politician. He was a ranked man. He had a great position at that time. But when they went, they had assignment from the king to go and to rebuild the temple. So they went with other people. You remember this time, the, 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 the priest called Ezra, Ezra. Ezra also went with them, Nehemiah and everyone. They started building the temple. But after a few years, the project to build the, the temple finished. They couldn't finish the temple. They, 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 they put foundation only. Then they abandoned the, 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 the project. Why? Because they had many, many attacks by enemies. But also they were greedy. They want to have money. They want to succeed. To make business. To plow the ground, to go to the field, to plant a vineyard, and many activities. So everyone was busy in his home. Everyone was busy in his activity. They tried to, to do what? They tried to do on their own project. They forget the, 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 the project of God to build the temple. 
So they were cursed. The curse of God falling upon them. In that period, the, the, the prophet Haggai, the prophet Haggai came and they started to prophesy, telling them why they are going through sorrows, through difficulties, through problems. It was because they abandoned the church. They couldn't rebuild the temple. They abandoned the project. Now God was angry against them. So God was giving them the solution. How to end that uh, uh, problems and that hunger they were. They were in. So the prophet told them to rebuild, to start again the project of the temple. So at this time, Zerubbabel was very, very confused because of enemies, because people could not go to the, to the work of the temple. He was very, very discouraged. At that time, the prophet Zechariah came to see him, to see the governor, Zerubbabel. He told him, This is the word of the Lord to you, Zerubbabel. It's not by your mighty, not by your power, but by my spirit say the lord of hosts hallelujah it's not by your power to do all these things what i need just to be encouraged be motivated to do this don't see around don't move because other are moving don't do because other are doing but you have your first step and go i will be with you is not by your power, by, by your initiative, by your intelligence, by your smartness, by your ability, by your capacity. But it's my spirit, says the Lord. When we, we do, we collaborate with the spirit of God. We do things that are above our imagination, our mind our thoughts and we are blessed i remember in the bible in the book of first samuel chapter 13 verse 22 first samuel 13 22 remember this time in israel there was political crisis so their enemies philistine came and attacked them and that time in Israel, they lack munitions. They lack weapons. They, do, they didn't have anything to fight with. The Bible says, So on the day of the battle, On the day of the battle, Not a soldier with Saul, Saul or the king, and Jonathan, his son, who was commander in chief, no one had a sword. No one had a spear in his hand. Only Saul and his son Jonathan had them. Imagine you are attacked by people. Philistines came to attack them with chariot with spells with sword with every kind of munitions but israel the army of israel no one had even a sword have even a spear except the two people the king saul and the jonathan do you think you can win that battle you cannot because you you don't have a weapon you don't have a weapon to fight with to fight against your enemies it was a serious crisis in israel it was a serious problem but let's see the chapter 14 in this book of first samuel the bible 
Bible say one day Jonathan let me remind you only two people had sword and despair who were the, those people Jonathan and Saul okay let us read one day Jonathan son of Saul said to his young armor bearer at that time when in in ancient time the the the, the commanders they had armor bearer those who were their aid their they, they the young people who helped them to carry their spear and to carry their sword so jonathan would with his this young man who carried his spear and his sword they, they called them armor bearer armor bearer is the one who helped you to carry your your sword or your spear so one day jonathan son of saul said to his young armor bearer come let us go over to the philistine outpost on the other side but he did not tell his father you remember his father had another another arm another sword but he didn't tell his father that he's going to fight with the the, the, the multitude of philistine because if he tells his father about this his father will tell him no we don't have weapons just remain here my son don't go there we die you are my, my elder son don't go there but it was reasonable for jonathan to tell his father because his father has another another weapon to tell him please give us borrow us you you you, you are sword I'm going somewhere. But Jonathan didn't tell his father that he's going to fight against their enemies. Though his father had another sword and despair. So listen to the, the story. The story is this. Saul was staying on the out, outcast of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree in Migron. With him were about 600 men. Saul had the 600 soldiers without weapon. Without weapon. They were sitting under the pomegranate tree. Just relaxing. But surrounded by the enemy. Jonathan could not hold this. He said, no, I must go and fight. Otherwise, we die like a dog. Let me go there. Among those 600 people were Ahijah. Ahijah was wearing an afford. Do you remember Ahijah? He was the son of Ichabod's brother. Ichabod was the son of what? Phineas. Phineas, one of the son of Eli. Eli, who was the priest at Shiloh. At that time, I remember when they took the Ark of Covenant and they went with this Ark for seven months in the territory of Philistine. You remember the story. So, and uh, Ahijah was there, the son of Phineas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh. No one was aware that Jonathan had left. He did this with a secret. He went with his armor bearer only. The Bible says, on each side of the path that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. They were on the upper mountain. So to go there, Jonathan could climb that cliff to go there. Remember when your enemy is on the top of a mountain and you are on a valley. You are defeated. But Jonathan, he was a courageous man. He climbed that cliff cliff to go on the top to fight many many people without even a weapon remember not by might not by power but by the spirit of god hallelujah not by might 
not by power but by the spirit of God so one cliff sorry one cliff was called the Bozes and the other Sener one cliff stood to the north toward Mikmash the other to the south toward Geba Jonathan verse 6 said to his young armor bearer come let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf nothing can hinder the Lord from saving whether by many or by few he was a faithful man he had the faith in the lord he trusted the lord he knew that it's not by mighty by power but by god when you are act, acting with god when you are with god remember nothing can hinder the lord from saving from delivering from doing miracles and wonders amen let's read it quickly he was telling his armor bearer, I also appreciate this armor bearer. If maybe it was you or another person, probably you could say, no, we can't. Don't go there. I'm just helping you to, 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 to bear this armor, but I'm not able to go with you. But this young man also, he had the faith in God. He said, do all you have in mind. His Amabira said, Go ahead. I'm with you. I'm with you, your heart and your soul. So Jonathan, come on. Then we will cross over toward them and let them see us. If they say to us, Wait there until we come to you. We will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, come, come up to us, we climb up because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. This will be the sign. This sign will be, when they say, come up here, we will go there. We know that God will be with us. But if they say, stay there, we know that God is not with us. This is contrary to some fearful people. Maybe we say, Lord, if they say, remain there, I will know that you, you are with me. But if they say, come here, I will know that they will kill us. But you understand the people, the, 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 the heroes, courageous people, they don't see like we see. They see opposite. They see contrary to, the, to, the, to, to our thinking, to our mindset. Praise the Lord. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Claim after me. The Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet. He was climbing the mountain using his hand and feet. You see, your enemy is on top seeing you. It's not a by, mighty by our but by the spirit of God amen hallelujah the Philistine fell before sorry so Jonathan said to his ambiar claim up after me the Lord has given them into our hand of Israel Jonathan climbed it climbed up using his hand and feet with his armor bearer right behind him the Philistine fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him in that far, first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about half a knock. You see, when we are with God, everything is possible. When we are working with God, everything is possible. I want to invite you today to trust God. Never trust your mind. Never trust your your strength never trust your ability yes maybe you are able to do something but there are many things you cannot do there are many things you cannot accomplish i invite you 
to ask the Holy Spirit to come to help you and to bless you. May the Lord bless you. Stand up and pray. Thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, we come before you. You are able to do everything. You are able to bless us. You are able to be with us. You are able, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit come and help us. We are limited. We are not able. We are not capable to do what we need and what we think. But with your power, with your spirit, we can do everything. Because with you, everything is possible. Without you, Lord, everything is impossible to us. Reason why we come before you, crying to you, Lord, help us, bless us, give us your spirit. Let your eyes be upon us. Your hand move upon us. Touch everyone, Lord. Bless everyone here, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit be with him and with her. Bless those who want to seek you. The wholeheartedly people who want to seek you, Lord, with their heart, their soul, their mind, their strength. Bless them. We believe and we know that it's not by mighty, by power. But we believe and we trust in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you.